Marta, take it away. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Magda Rivera, and the, I'm the commissioner of the Boston Centers for Youth and Families. Thank you for joining us in the first of several community meetings uh, for the Boston Centers for Youth and Families Austin Bright and Bright and Sighting Study. Um, I'd like to start by introducing our teams for the city and some of our uh, partners and elected officials. So uh, first, um, our chiefs, Irish and Maso are not here, but I'll just um, uh, acknowledge that, um, you know, we are doing this in partnership with the Public Facilities Department. The Chief of Operations is Dion Irish, who oversees public facilities. Our Chief um, in the Human Services Department is Jose Maso. Um, I'm joined this evening by some of our team members. Uh, you all might know Rosie Hanlon, um, who is a Brighton native and is the administrative coordinator, uh, essentially the site director at the Jackson Man and has been there, uh, there for many years. We also have um, our public information manager, Sandy. Our director of operations is not on the call, but he'll be joining occasionally. Um, and let's see, oftentimes our facilities manager is on the call. I'm not sure he's also joined us, but uh, Pat McDonough sometimes joins these calls. Um, but today we have Sandy, we have Rosie, and I think that's it for our team. Um, but again, our uh, partnership with public facilities is so key to this. They've been extraordinary on so many other uh, site studies and other projects throughout the city. So I want to thank uh, my colleague, Carrie Griffin, who's a director of PFD, who's on this call, their chief of staff, Ellen McDonough. Um, I think I saw Evan Brinkman on the call and our project manager, who has been incredible on so many other projects, uh, Alistair Lux. And our consultant team on this project and several others is uh, Uteo. And the person you heard earlier is Brett, uh, Brett Benson, who's the principal for the Uteo consultant team. And he's joined this evening by Andrew. And last but not least, we have the Office of Neighborhood Services. I think I saw Frank on. Maybe not. Uh, Frank Mendoza is a liaison. Um, you all, some of you all might know Connor, who was previously the liaison of Austin Brighton. Uh, and then the director of the Office of Neighbor Services is Antigua Pepin. They have inst been instrumental in helping us uh, pull together a community advisory committee that we are still working on finalizing in partnership with our elected officials. I want to say that on that note, um, Councilor Breeden sends her regrets that she had a conflict this evening. She is in full support of a, as she says, a state-of-the-art community center complex. And uh, again, sends her regards in full support for this process and um, hopes to make future meetings. And on that, that note, I do want to say that I, um, let's see, I thought I saw Representative Honan. want to acknowledge Representative Honan is on the call. And uh, if I could pause, just want to give a minute to Representative Honan, if you'd like to say a couple words. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. The Jackson Man Community Center has been vitally important to the Alston Brighton community for 47 years. In fact, my mother was a, a charter member of the board when Bernie Stewart was the director our first director, and I'm still in touch with Bernie, uh, talk about issues all the time with Bernie, who's a housing person living down Cape Cod. Um, but this, the programs and services offered at the Jackson Man Community Center, from ESL to daycare to recreational activities for our children, educational opportunities for our adults, along with the grammar school and the Horace Mayor, of vital players in the life of our Alston Brighton communities. So, and it is our only community center for about 80,000 people. So I know how valuable it has been to the young people. I coordinated a sponsored a Friday night basketball league there. And I know now they play, have soccer leagues. Uh, they provide coaching and opportunities for our neighborhood young people in addition to those academic opportunities for adults and newcomers to Boston. So it's a critically important 
building. It's like the heartbeat of the neighborhood right there in Union Square. I realize the building is in terrible shape. It's extraordinary that a building from that era from 50 years ago would be in such horrible condition falling apart while other buildings that were built in the 1930s are pretty strong. I was there going through the top floor, seeing buckets collecting water from the roof uh, leaking on all, almost every classroom had buckets in it. And then the, the walls are bowing. I had not heard of buildings with walls that bowed, but that's what's happening to the building. So it is my sincere hope along with Councillor Breeden, Will Brownsberger, Mike Moran, that we rebuild. That location's a great location. Senator Brownsberger and I were able to put a million dollars in the state budget at the state level to help with this process. So we sure hope you're able to rebuild at this location, Marta. It's uh, vital to the people who live in Alston Brighton. We are experiencing an enormous amount of construction and development and it's important that the city and the state be there to provide services to people when they need it. So I look forward to working with you throughout this process. We may, we may need to be creative with financing, but hopefully the city can, can help in an extraordinary way to rebuild at that central location. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Absolutely, thank you. And we thank you for the support, the funding, and I agree we'll have to get creative, not just with the funding, but also with youth of space, uh, use of space in Alston Brighton, and we're up for the challenge. Thank you. I know you are. Thank you. So I think we, um, I don't think we're missing any other electeds. Um, so if we move on to the, oh, am I missing any other introductions? Uh, Flag me, please, if there's, uh, nope, I think we're good. Perfect. All right, so we are gonna share what the study goals are, uh, what BCYF goals and objectives are uh, as well. Then uh, UTL is going to share some demographic information um, as well as what BCYF currently offers through our network of community centers. Uh, they're going to do a quick online survey, and they're also going to share a little bit about the survey that will be used throughout this process and um, share a little bit about our existing community centers. And then we're going to uh, wrap up with Q&A um, at the end. So we can move on to the next one. So with respect to the study goals, I know that um, at least some of we I had seen, and, and I know Sandy had shared that, we had uh, seen online and we had gotten, I think to 311, there were some questions and um, a little bit of advocacy with respect to this meeting that took place uh, that had folks either asking questions or positioning uh, the, the community center, not having a community center in Austin Brighton in the interim. So I, I wanna make clear that that will this process here is not about the the plans for the interim the goals of this study is to answer the questions of the what where and you know the what's possible so we're looking to identify what are the potential locations in Alston Brighton and we understand or in council Breeden made it very clear she says there's nothing else this is it if this is it great the other aspect of this citing study is to understand what does the community want? So that's the what. So what types of programming and uses do we wanna see in the community center? What are the possible sites or locations? And then UTL is going to do what's called, they're gonna verify or do a test fit or a three-dimensional um, uh, three test fit of those programs and uses within the sites that have been identified. And that's different than, than, a, than a design, but it allows us to see whether what pro, the programs that the community wants is possible or are possible within the sites that have been identified. So that's gonna be uh, introduced and presented in a final report. So that's what we're looking to do with this siting study. It's look at what does the community want, what types of programs and activities, what are the possible sites and what is possible within those sites. The question of the interim, uh, 
uh, with respect to what happens when the Jackson Man closes. Uh, that's a different planning process. And again, thanks to, as Rep. Kevin Hohen said, there's been some uh, investment in what could, um, in, in a planning process for making sure that there isn't a gap, that Alston Brighton is not left without a community center. Thank you. We'll, we can go on to the next one. BCUF's goals and objectives with um, ultimately is to have a facility, or as we call it, a standalone, a facility that is not limited by hours, um, that has the ability to provide more programming in the community, that is flexible and has adequate space to provide a diverse uh, diverse programming and um, serve the diversity of constituencies in every community. One of the challenges we have being in a school facility, as folks maybe at the Jackson Man will see or have encountered, is that we're limited by hours. So we're limited by hours of operation, we're limited by um, uh, space, whether it's sharing a space or space we can or can't access. Our standalone facilities uh, don't have those same limitations. So that's that's our goal, is to have a facility that has more flexibility, more programming availability, and has the ability to program space sun up to sundown uh, to be able to meet all the needs of the community. We can go on to the next one. Okay, so for these next slides, I'm going to pass it on to uh, Alistair. Hi, everyone. My name is Alistair Lux, and uh, I work for the Public Facilities Department. And as Marta said, we're, we're helping BCYF manage the study. And um, I wanted to talk about uh, briefly the uh, a typical project schedule. So as you can see from this slide, we're at the very uh, first stage of the overall project process. And um, the study phase typically lasts anywhere from 8 to 12 months. And um, so we're, we're, we'll be looking to uh, finish up our study in uh, the spring of 2023. And then, as you can see, there's several phases after uh, before um, shovels go in the ground and before uh, the community center can be built and um, occupied. So um, I also wanted to mention on this slide that we'll have opportunities for community input throughout this study, and there will be further opportunities later on when we enter into the design phase of the project. But as Marta said, um, during the study, we're, it's really a, an, a, all about information gathering during the study. We're, we're focused primarily on collecting information about the program and also the sites so that um, we will be able to make uh, informed decisions during the, the later phases of the project. So there's uh, a lot of opportunity um, during this early phase of the project. And uh, it's very important. We, we wanna hear from the Alston Brighton community about um, what your thoughts and opinions are. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a, just a zoomed in look at, at the actual study phase. Uh, we're planning on having four community meetings. So this tonight is the very first community meeting. And we're, we're just introducing the, um, the study at this meeting tonight and talking a little bit about some of the existing conditions and at, at the center and um, at the Jackson Mann Center and uh, some existing conditions in the Alston Brighton neighborhood. At the next meeting, we'll um, discuss a draft program. So that will be, we'll talk about um, what, uh, we think might be uh, the activities and types of spaces that are needed and desired by both BCYF and the community. And then at the third meeting in February, uh, we hope to uh, give everyone an update on that uh, draft program and introduce um, some of the sites that we've been, uh, that we uh, think are worthy or might, might, um, work as sites for the community center. And then at that fourth meeting in April, we'll, we'll um, share some of the test fits that we develop on, on the most promising sites. 
so that we can uh, share with you what we've learned about some of the pros and cons of uh, the different sites and the different layouts that we've explored through the test fits. And then at the end of the study, we'll be issuing a final report where we gather all of the uh, information and present it in a readable format. And that information includes all of the feedback that we've gathered from you all. And that we hope that um, with the completion of the final report, everyone, including city officials and community members will have a chance to read the report and carefully consider all of the information before we move on to the next phases of the project. So thank you. That's just a, an overview of, of the schedule. And um, with that, I'll pass it on to Brett from UTL and he'll take us through some of the um, existing conditions information. Alistair and Marta, thanks so much for that introduction. And thanks so much to everybody on the call for participating tonight. Um, I wanna start by reviewing some demographic information for Alston Brighton so we can get a kind of quantitative snapshot of the neighborhood. So this first map shows existing community facilities in Alston Brighton, and this is by no means an exhaustive map, but we wanted to capture the existing Jackson Man Community Center site, the West End Boys and Girls Club, major public parks and public schools. And you can see that the Jackson Man Community Center is at a major crossroads in Alston at the corner of Cambridge, Brighton Ave and North Beacon. Um, and this information will all be posted to BCYF's website so you can have a chance to review it in more detail um, later. This next map shows population distribution by race. It also indicates population density where the closer spaced dots indicate greater population. And the greatest density is concentrated along the green line on Com Ave. This map shows the distribution of average household income throughout the neighborhood with the darker shades of purple indicating higher incomes and the lighter shades indicating lower incomes. We also mapped the distribution of certain age groups, particularly served by community centers. So this map shows the distribution of residents over the age of 65 by percent of total population in each census tract. And this slide shows the distribution of residents under the age of 18 by percent of total population in each tract. So on the next several slides, we're going to review the types of programs and uses that will happen in a new community center. Understanding what the community wants these programs and uses to be gets really to the heart of this study, and we'll be revisiting these issues throughout the process. On this slide, we're showing the many different types of uses and activities that currently happen in BCYF community centers all across the city, arranged from the most common at the top to the least common at the bottom. And understanding the types of programs that happen in BCYF centers is important uh, because each one of these takes up a certain amount of space and has specific requirements. And as we start to group these together, um, a building size begins to take shape. And these programs can be grouped into four broad categories. Um, in the community and education category, these spaces range from community meeting rooms to kids and teens rooms, to senior centers, to technology labs, in the arts category, these spaces range from performance spaces to music rooms to art rooms and maker spaces. In the fitness and sports category, these include flexible spaces like yoga, dance, or martial arts studios to more fixed spaces like gyms and swimming pools. And in the outdoor spaces category, these include outdoor gathering spaces like a patio or a courtyard uh, to outdoor athletics like basketball courts or playing fields. So tonight we are launching an online community survey to gather information about how people use and access the current community center and to measure what people want to see in a future community center. And we're gonna ask all of you listening in tonight to participate in a version of this poll to make this Zoom meeting a little more interactive. Um, the online survey will be linked on BCYF's website and we'll also provide paper copies for those who would prefer to participate without using a screen. So we're going to start with an easy icebreaker question. Where do you live? Um, and Andrew's going to launch the first poll. Um, and I wanna let everybody know that this information will be completely anonymous. So um, we're not going to hold you to it, but it's just going to be a great snapshot of um, people participating tonight. And we'll leave this poll up for a minute or so so everybody has a chance to answer the questions. I 
All right, great. Why don't we end the poll and we'll put some results up here. Excellent. All right. So on to the next one. So um, next we're going to like, we'd like you to indicate your age and you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. And I want to, you know, emphasize this is anonymous. So you can be honest. Um, I tell all my friends I've been 32 for the last 10 years plus. Excellent. Great. So we can end the poll. All right. Great. Um, <clears throat> so next, um, we'd like to know which community resources you use the most often. Uh, you can include more than one answer in this question. All right, great. Jackson Mann takes the uh, takes the prize. Um, <clears throat> so next, we'd like to ask you um, for your input on which, if any, um, resources need expansion or improvement in a new community center. So these can range from daycare to youth and teen programming, adult education, senior programming, a, a swimming pool health and fitness uh, type of activities. Great, there was a comment in the chat about wishing for more options um, on the poll. We're a little bit limited on the Zoom polling technology, but the online survey will give you more options to answer, um, put in other questions or other comments. That's great. So we're also interested in how you travel to the current Jackson Mann Community Center. All right, thanks everybody. We won't tell Uber that nobody takes them to uh, the community center. All right, so we're going to get into a couple of uh, different types of format of questions. So uh, we're going to ask you to rank your top one or two most important types of gathering spaces in a new community center. So these choices could include a large and flexible community room that could be subdivided, uh, smaller meeting rooms for groups of six or to eight people, a senior center where seniors can gather for activities or to socialize, uh, or a specialized theater with a stage and lighting. And again, this is a multiple choice question, so you can answer um, more than one.
Great. I can show the results. All right, for the next question, um, we'd also like you to rank the most um, important types of community and education spaces. So these choices can include spaces dedicated to kids of varying ages, daycare, youth classrooms, and a teen center, or spaces that serve a range of ages, such as a demonstration kitchen or adult education classrooms. All right, great, we can close the poll. Okay, so for arts and technology, please let us know the most important types of spaces to all of you. So these could include music rooms with recording studios, flexible art rooms for painting, drawings, and ceramics. Uh, maker spaces with more specialized equipment like 3D printers, sewing machines, and laser cutters, uh, or technology labs with computers for learning software skills or using specialized software for video editing, uh, image production, or robotics. Great, we'll close the poll. Okay, so shifting to fitness programs, there is a wide range of potential activities and we'd like you to indicate your two or three most important types. Uh, the current Jackson Mann Community Center does not have an indoor swimming pool and we'd like to learn if this is an important program for the community. Uh, these could include a competitive indoor pool with regulation lanes and spectator seating, a quote unquote standard indoor pool that includes lanes for swimming laps, but none of the equipment for competitions, or a recreational pool that is suitable for swim lessons or leisure swimming and could include a zero, zero barrier entry for universal access. Excuse me. Uh, fitness also includes a number of flexible spaces, such as a studio for yoga, dance or martial arts, or a weight room or a cardio room. Great, we can close the poll. So gymnasiums can include a wide range of activities. Uh, we'd like to know what's most important to you. Basketball, climbing walls, batting cages, indoor track, tennis, pickleball. Okay, great. We also wanna hear from you about outdoor programs. Is a covered outdoor space like the current overhang overlooking Ringer Playground uh, an important program to keep in a new community center? Is open field space like a grass field important or an athletic field with stripes for soccer, or football, or baseball? or outdoor basketball courts, um, outdoor playscapes is another option along with community gardens.
Okay, we can close that one. All right. Um, lastly, we're interested if the current location at the corner of Cambridge and Brighton Ave is the ideal location for a new community, community center, or if you'd like to see it somewhere else. If you are interested in the other uh, location, we definitely encourage you to take the online survey where you will be able to fill in the blank um, and give us suggestions. Sadly, Zoom doesn't allow for us to get into that level of detail. Okay, I think we can close that one out. Great. Okay, so thanks so much everybody for participating in the Zoom polls. Um, you can follow this link on the page here or use the QR code to take the online survey as well. Um, like I said, the survey allows us to ask for more nuanced feedback than the Zoom polls. So please do follow that link. Um, and also share it with all of your friends and neighbors. We really want to get your feedback, uh, and we look at every response, and it really does directly in, impact our study. Okay, so the last part of our presentation is going to look at uh, the existing community center and site. Uh, and the site consists of two connected buildings, the Jackson Mann School and the Horace Mann School for the Deaf. Uh, the buildings are connected by a bridge across Armington Street, and the community center inhabits both buildings. Ringer Playground is directly adjacent to the Horace Mann and accessed by Webley Street or Alston Street. And here's some photos of the existing community center. Uh, we were very fortunate that Rosie Hanlon, the wonderful administrative coordinator of the Jackson Mann Community Center gave us a tour of the buildings. Uh, so on the upper left is a photo of the overhang at the Horace Mann that is connected to Ringer Playground. Uh, the next photo to the right is the theater in the Jackson Man, uh, and in the lower right, the gym and the Horace Man across the street. So you can see how the community center really has to bridge across both of those buildings. Um, on the lower left is the mural of Rita Hester watching over the entry plaza of the Jackson Man, and next to her is the American flag that Bill Clinton signed when he visited the community center in 1999. So with that, I wanna thank all of you for your attention tonight and open it up to questions. Uh, please raise your hand in Zoom and we'll call on you to unmute yourself. Please don't be shy. Um, you can also ask questions in the Q&A or post comments in the chat if you'd rather not um, speak out loud. But again, thank you so much for your time tonight. Okay. Um, Alejandra, I see your hand raised. I will ask you to unmute and you can go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. Hello? Hello, go ahead. Hi, um, good evening. My name is Alejandra Velasquez and I am currently a resident of Alston for 32 years. I'm also a mother of three young children, 12, nine and five. And I just wanted to say thank you for this presentation. I will definitely inform neighbors, friends, and family, because I'm also one of the parents that was affected, not just by, you know, the after school, the BYF, and everything, all the, you know, programs that you guys offer. I was also one of the parents that was affected by the Jackson Man closing. And I just want you guys to really understand as one point of view, as, you know, my side, I really appreciate everyone there, Maria, Rosie, Jeff, everyone, John, they did tremendous, tremendous work there. It was very convenient because I also live on Palm Ave and I'm so grateful. I'm sad that, you know, the school is not there, you know, the other activities that they offer, the soccer, the basketball, like I said, it's very difficult. And a lot of parents, I can say that I, speak to that also live in the area really want the best for you know the community center and we would like for it to you know stay in it you know in Alston like I can't you know stress it enough 
the Jackson Man. I went to the Jackson Man when it was K two up to fifth grade. So now then when they changed it, it was up to eighth grade. And I used it. I used it for my son, my first son, my second son. Unfortunately, my daughter, I wanted to have that opportunity. She did over the summer and I'm grateful for that, but she couldn't enjoy the after school as in any other program that they always offer in the fall, winter. And I just want to, you know, let you know that we really, 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 really want this community center. It's the only one in Austin. My kids now go to school in Brighton and then they're all scattered, which I don't like. So just once again, thank you. I hope you take us seriously. And, you know, thank you for giving us a chance to approach this. And like I said, I will really want to be a community center and not they just close the school down and build condos or, you know, houses or any of that nature. Because everyone in Austin is growing. Austin Brain is growing. A lot of, you know, different ethnicities are coming around more and more. So I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity. And yes, we want the community center. Thank you so much for your comment. Um, Anthony, you are next. Please go ahead and unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Desidoro. Uh, among other things, I'm president of the Austin Civic Association. I um, want to welcome the people from uh, uh, the city uh, and appreciate the uh, the effort being made here to begin the process of not only uh, relocating or keeping the center where it is permanently and also looking at an interim location as well. Uh, just a few concerns that I have. Uh, number one, and this is sort of not something we can do much about, but you know, this, this issue of this complex has been talked about for years now. Um, and there was always a strong possibility that um, that this complex was going to be closed down and that we would need to take steps to mitigate that that closing. It's unfortunate that you know the official announcement was made about a year and a half ago. And it's unfortunate that it's taken this long for BCYF to actually begin the process. Uh, uh, the, the process should have started fairly quickly after the announcement was made by uh, BPS. So uh, that's one thing. Secondly, um, we have been involved, as you know, there is so much development going on. There are so many different things going on in our community. And we have been studied to death. Uh, we have participated uh, the, like just like all the people that are here tonight, very busy people who have many other responsibilities, but who take the time because they care about their community and they're willing to do their part and provide their input so that the result is the best result uh, for our community. And studies so far, a lot of the recent ones have been very disappointing because it has set a level of expectations, just like this, this one is. Everybody is excited to participate in this process because we're talking about the potential of a new community center. And that's very exciting. But the history, unfortunately, is that there's been a lot of broken promises and lack of uh, action to actually fund and design and go ahead and implement these hundreds of recommendations that we have all over the place. Uh, here in Austin, Brighton. So uh, I guess my, my question to BCYF is, I am assuming, and I hope it's a good assumption, that BCYF is definitely committed to tempor temporarily, as soon as possible, relocating the community center, and that they are committed to design and finding the funding to build a new one. Uh, I just don't like, I feel again, very uncomfortable that the, um, the takeaway from this process is just a report. The takeaway from this uh, process should be a commitment by the city that they are definitely uh, committed to building a new community center in Austin Brighton. So I hope that's the case. And the third thing I just bring up, I think it's very critically important. We hear so much about 
the importance of voting and elections and consequences and the whole nine yards, I'm sure you know that this community center also houses five precincts in the Austin Brighton area. I don't know if the election department has begun the process of looking at alternative sites to house these precincts. Uh, of course, ADA compliant, uh, compliance is very important, but more importantly is location. We have to be very sensitive to, fact, uh, to the fact, given the diverse nature of our community, that not everybody can jump into a car or take public transportation. Uh, many people have to walk or bike uh, when they wanna uh, exercise their right to vote. So I hope that that process is already underway, that once the community center closes next uh, summer, that uh, there is a plan in place uh, to efficiently relocate uh, the five precinct locations as well, so that people, uh, uh, there is plenty of uh, equity involved that people can easily uh, in those precincts get to their polling, new polling locations and exercise their right to vote. Thank you very much. Tony, thank you so much for your comments. Um, and I would like to encourage you to send that survey to all of the Civic Association members so we can gather as much feedback. It really does help influence the entire process start to finish. Thank you, Tony. This is Marta, ahead, um, Marta. Uh, Commissioner Rivera here. Thank you for your comments and your questions. So we are, with respect to BZY being committed to this process, we're committed from uh, you know, beginning to end and hoping to, to see this till the day we you know, break ground and cut the ribbon. Um, and we wanna see it uh, just as much as, as you all do happen sooner rather than later. And we are, you know, we continue to work with our colleagues in BPS to make sure uh, that, you know, you, you talked about elections, for instance, that in summer 23, that if we are not able to identify the location, um, uh, the interim location or have a interim site, for uh, BCYF and those election locations that we are able to keep um, the current location for beyond you know, the summer 2023. So we continue to have those conversations with our colleagues and with BPS um, because there, there can be no, uh, no gaps. We cannot have a time when we don't have a community center, where we don't have obviously you know, locations that are accessible, as you said, for elections. Uh, so, you know, my colleagues are all in agreement, so we are, we continue to have those conversations, and I'm sure that we'll have a decision fairly soon, because even though summer 23 sounds uh, a long time, because we just wrapped up summer 22, it'll be here before we know it, and, you know, folks need to plan. So Thank you, are, I appreciate that. Absolutely. And with respect to the studies, I, I get folks get, you know, I, I heard this with other uh, projects. We we hear of pro, uh, study after study, and um, as exhausting as these can be, it not only does it help inform, um, provide information and current conditions, and I, I know most of us don't want to hear sort of the bureaucratic processes. A lot of these uh, studies and evaluations they are uh, required as sort of like the next step to get us into, uh, to get us to, to the next level or next step in the project. So we can't without a more you know, recent study or um, an assessment get to the next level. So if you're you know, hearing about studies ad nauseum, it's because they're often required as part of the process to submit a request for uh, funding. So, sorry, go ahead, um, Brett. Oh, sorry, uh, as he carries on, did you want to chime in? Yeah, Mater, I just wanted to reinforce that. I know um, the studies, um, you know, can be arduous, but they're so important to how we develop the capital plan. And not only that, to understand the full size of the building. Um, I, I know, uh, I'm not sure if everyone recently heard about the um, um, the mayor's announcement of a new um, standalone in Dorchester. That went through this process same process, um, actually with the same team, same design team. Um, and Mater and I were both new at that time in our positions um, as we were going through that. But these do 
uh, everything we do within public facilities departments starts with the study, either conceptual um, assessment, feasibility. And most of these studies, um, they require community engagement to get it right. So um, it, it, it is worth it. I know it adds a step, but it's, um, it's, how, it's how we build our capital plan. And Carrie, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the, the commissioner committing to the fact that uh, the goal here is not to have a gap at all, that, uh, that there will be uh, interim uh, accommodations made. And then uh, uh, I understand the process. Uh, and, and, and I also understand though that, uh, that the studies are an integral part of the process and everything. Again, there's an also sense of frustration in the community that a lot of these studies that have been completed as part of the process simply have uh, uh, lost energy uh, after they've been completed and the funding, design, implementation, construction, whatever you want, depending on the recommendations, uh, have not come to pass. And again, studies raise expectation levels. Uh, people uh, become very hopeful and excited about uh, the deliverables from that uh, process, whatever that may be. And we just don't wanna be frustrated again. So I appreciate the commitment of the city to avoid any gaps at all in that the, uh, 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 the, the function of, of the current community center will endure without interruption, uh, either on an interim basis or qu as quickly as possible on a permanent basis. So thank you for that. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Carrie. Great, thanks everybody for your comments. Um, please feel free to raise your hand um, if you have a comment that you'd like to make and we can call on you. And we thank you, Kelly McGrath was emphasizing the need for the community center as well. And uh, we saw that um, she says she's having a hard time, I think I'm muting, but thank you. We, your, your comment is recorded in the chat. Uh, okay, Siobhan, you should be able to unmute yourself. Yes, hi, my name is Siobhan McHugh. I live in Oak Square. Um, my children, grown-ups now, attended Jackson Man School, and they also attended BCYF. Um, more so, my son, for three different sports, was in soccer for years there. And I would like to see it stay in that location. It's a really important location, not only for the four or five bus routes that it's on, but for the emigrant population, especially who live close by that can, it's easily accessible. Um, an important thing to remember, I do think standalone is fantastic, but I would like to see it be a standalone beside the Jackson Man School, which will hopefully reopen there. I do not think any other site should be looked at. This is a really important site and you have to keep in mind the partnerships that BCYF there held um, like soccer program that was there, scores was there, tenacity, which are headquartered in Brighton, had a tennis program there. The Boys and Girls Club is across the field. The park is there. It's really important that these partnerships stay so that there can be activities for families to do. So I think it's important, really important, that the BCYF reopens as a standalone in that location. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. If there are other comments, uh, please raise your hand or feel free to put them in the Q&A or in the chat and we can read them for you. Alejandra, you have your hand raised again. I'll let you unmute, or you can do it yourself now. Hi. Um, yes, I just wanted to elaborate what Sandy said as well. For instance, um, in Austin, I, like I said, I've been living here my whole life. My kids go to the Gardner. Two of them go to the Gardner. One goes to Boston Green Academy. And the after school was in the preschool was an opportunity for families 
people, I had elderly people, neighbors, they used to walk me and pick me up from the Jackson Inn and be able to pick up my children from the Jackson Inn, giving me time and able to work, even work a little bit extra for them in order where the location was. And like, I just want to elaborate for now too, there's so many families that are affected without having the after school, not just even the after school, just programs, you know, running for the summer, running for winter breaks. And it affects a lot, a lot of people. And like she stated, we need to have it in that location. For instance, I can, from my house, walk to the park, you know, walk to go take the bus in that route. I work up the street at the hospital. So it's very convenient. And I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, we need it in Alston because everything's bright and bright and bright. Don't get me wrong. I know Alston brain are connected, you know, but it's what about this Alston? And as one of the places that are open to when extremely hot weather, weather and also when elderly people when it's extremely hot and, you know, some of them don't have air conditioners. They just have fans. Even in wintertime, there was times that the lights turned off here. At that time, I just had my sons, two of them, and I had to go to the community center because they were open. I had to keep them warm until they fixed what was going on in the building. So I know a lot of people, I also, like I said in the comments, I do work at the election department. I do the polling. So you see people from all over go there and they all know Jackson Man, Jackson Man, but not just Jackson Man, the school. They know as the place of Jackson Man, but the community center. Rosie's been there for years. Everyone is just very important. And, and also, like Anthony stated, I hope you guys don't like give us, I say you guys, is because, you know, the people that are on the project do not give us false, false hopes and thinking, oh, yes, yes, yes. You know, we're going to do a community center. Yes, yes, yes. But is it going to be convenient for the Alston residents? That's all I just wanted to say. Thank you, Alejandra, for your comment. Uh, Joanne, you are next. Thank you, uh, Joanne Barber from Charles Hugh. I just want to reinforce what um, all of the previous um, folks have have um, stated, but I also want to make sure that we are clear that um, this is a space where um, the city owns the land. We don't need to be looking for other um, areas to build the center and wasting time around that. And so I hope that that comes clear with the um, uh, polls that you've seen. I think the second thing that I really want to reinforce is that it's going to be very important for the community as you move forward with the, um, the, the programming in the center that this is done in person, that we have charrettes for people to come and see what what you're talking about and what it's going to look like uh, so that it's not just on, um, you know, a, available just for, for folks who have access to the computers uh, in the evening. So I would hope that there are some plans to be able to do some, and I know it's a little crazy uh, still, to do in-person uh, charrettes around what you are coming up with and, and, and hopefully also to be able to shorten the time frame without having to look for alternative permanent sites. Yes, there needs to be uh, an interim site, but hopefully we can um, decrease the amount of time that it takes to put this together by knowing that there is this site that the community really values and uh, accesses um, with public transportation um, and with the park uh, and the opportunities for the partnerships that people have discussed. So thank you. Hi, Brett, I can, um, I'd like to just respond to um, part of Joanne's comment, if, if I may. I forgot to mention earlier when I was reviewing the, um, the schedule for this study is that we're gonna have, um, the next meeting will be in person. And the third one, we're gonna go uh, have it uh, online. And then the fourth one will be back in person. And the reason we're doing that is because in previous uh, studies, we've heard both uh, some people prefer the convenience of having it online. Other people, they prefer the the face-to-face uh, -face contact of an in-person meeting. So we wanted to try to accommodate both uh, sentiments. And uh, we felt that um, having uh, 
you know, alternating between the two meeting formats would be a good way to do that. So we definitely uh, are looking forward to the next meeting and seeing everybody in person and getting some of that face-to-face -face, um, contact that really uh, enhances the uh, community uh, feedback experience. So uh, we hope you can join us at our next meeting and we'll be sure to publicize that well in advance of when that's scheduled to uh, take place. So thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks, Alistair. I just want to um, reiterate how important these surveys are, um, because once you tell us what's important to this neighborhood, we can, that's how we do our test fit in our massing um, for the site. So that's critical to um, determining, determining what size what size is needed here. Um, and, you know, how we could do it, whether it's going to be a two story, a three story, a, you know, how, and what the size of it is so that that's, that's um, determined by the program. So please, please, please go on um, to the BCYF <clears throat> website and, um, you know, sp spread it to your neighbors and friends to do this survey. It's critical. Getting this information is critical to the work that we do. Thanks for making that plug, Carrie. We'll also have paper copies of the survey available for those uh, who don't want to interact with screens or are, uh, have limited access to them. And we'll we'll work with BCYF on uh, distributing them and making sure that everybody knows where to get them. If there are other comments, please feel free to raise your hand, put them in the chat, put them in the Q&A. Uh, Tony, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, Brett, just a, a clarification question. I'm just thinking here. Um, how how contingent uh, the, the BCYF is going to go off on their way here and go through the process? And you've heard a lot of sediment about keeping the um, community center uh, as a standalone on the current site and everything. How How much does the corresponding BPS process uh, is there a potential that that could slow the, your process and hold you guys back? Because I would think if BPS still has plans to uh, place a new educational facility as well on this site, uh, if they were to drag their feet on that or, uh, you know, kind of uh, take their time, would that uh, adversely impact the uh, the um, the time frame that you guys are looking at to, to get through this process and get on with uh, with uh, construction, especially if it is on the current site? Um, I'll answer that. So we work closely with BPS. We're doing a lot of studies with them, one of them being this site for an educational program. So um, we, this, we, from our, from our standpoint, we look at this as a, um, master plan for this site with the BCYF and with a educational component. Um, so because it's our, you know, our department where we're working closely with both and making sure that we're coordinating, communicating, um, no, we can, you know, next time for the next meeting, um, you know, we can, um, I'll make sure that there's some BPS representatives here um, at the in-person meeting so that if there's a question, but we are working with BPS on, um, and I'll actually give a plug to the study that we're doing with them on a study throughout that's um, um, district wide um, for throughout the city um, for every community in all 23 neighborhoods. So we are looking at that and we're working with them on that so that the there's no information, you know, so that we don't miss information or or not be able to um, communicate um, a unified message. So, but we do, and at the next meeting, I will have someone from BPS there so they can speak to what, um, uh, you know, what we've been doing and um, how this will work together. Great, thanks, Carrie. Um, so thank again, you, Sandy, ahead, drop the, uh, no, someone requested the, the link to the uh, survey in the chat. Thank you, Sandy, for dropping that. And there was, I think someone asked again if the PowerPoint was gonna be available. The recording and the PowerPoint will be available on BCYF's page tomorrow, correct? Tomorrow morning? Yes. Okay, so that's boston.gov forward slash BCYF. You'll be able to find it there. You'll also find the, record, uh, the recording, the presentation, 
and the access to the survey. You'll find a link. And again, we really want to push that out because although we're hearing a lot of support for this particular site, the current site of the Jackson Man Community Center, we want to emphasize that the siting study isn't just about identifying locations, that it's also about asking the question about the what, the program, which is what the survey will help us capture. Uh, what do we want to see at the center? What do we want to see in this you know, future community center? The more you spread that, the more of these surveys you help us complete, the better we'll be able to create and form this uh, test fit or the number three step in our goal, which is the verify, the better, um, the more information will help uh, gather for UTL to create this report and start to shape uh, what that looks like. And as Carrie said, is it a two-story building? What's the massing? So please get that out. And um, uh, Rosie wanted me to mention that I believe Brett already mentioned it, but worth mentioning again, if you don't have access to a phone or computer, and you're not able to do it online, Rosie's going to have paper copies of those. Uh, so however you prefer, paper copy, online, we'll have those available. Uh, Whitney Sands is putting some comments in the chat. I'll just read them out loud around um, uses in the building. So small business development, classes in manufacturing development, workspace, STEM classes for adults, partnerships with local private companies to assist the needs of employees living in the community, like daycare. All great information. Thank you, Whitney, for sharing that. And on the online survey, there will be uh, a location where you can um, type in your own ideas for uses, and we'll look at every single one um, and evaluate that for uh, the study. Any other comments? Please raise your hand. We're very happy to answer them. You can post them in the chat, put them in the Q&A. Okay, I think we have come to the end. Um, so as Marta said, and I think Sandy put in the chat, uh, please visit BCYF's website uh, for information. You'll have a recording of the meeting tonight. There will be a PDF copy of this presentation. We will have links to the survey, um, all of that information on there in a way for you to provide uh, feedback to all of us. Thanks again for your attention and your time tonight and your participation. And we will look forward to seeing you in person at the next community meeting. Thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody for participating. Have a good night, everybody.